In this video, I'll walk through a couple of examples of improper integrals. And improper integrals are when you have one of two things. So the first scenario that would give you an improper integral is when one or both of the limits of integration are equal to infinity. And if you have that, you, you have an in, um, you have an improper integral. And we have that in the first example here. The second scenario would be if the integrand, and that's the function before you take the integral, this integrand here and here, if this integrand uh, becomes infinity over the interval, of integration. And I'll say the interval a to b because oftentimes in general form of definite integrals we use a and b for the the lower and upper limit of integration. So the first example the integral of 1 over x taken from 1 to infinity. We've met, it meets this first scenario. The, one of the limits of integration is infinity. So the way we uh, work with that is to say, what about the limit as a approaches infinity? And now take this integral from 1 to a. Well, evaluating this um, integral gives you the, the limit as a approaches infinity of the natural log of x, that's the antiderivative of 1 over x, from 1 to a, and that equals the, the limit as a approaches infinity, the limit of the natural log of a minus the natural log of 1, and the natural log of 1 is just 0. So we have the limit as a approaches infinity, the limit of natural log of a. And that becomes infinity. And when you get that, or if the limit does not exist, so either if you get a limit of infinity or if the limit that does not exist, then this we say this diverges. The whole thing diverges, which means this cannot be evaluated. So we snuck out of that one, <laughs> but we had to do some work to show, to show that it can't be evaluated. You can't just look at it and say, hey, that can't be evaluated. I'm going to go on. So we did some work to show that it, why it can't be evaluated, and then we can say, nope, can't do it. Okay, the next one. This meets the second scenario. The integrand becomes infinity somewhere over the interval, and it's not at the limit of negative 1 or 1. So we have the integral of 1 over x to the 2 thirds. But where would this be uh, undefined or become infinity? Well, it's when x is 0. When x is 0, you've got this 1 over 0 business, and we can't have that. And 0 is right in the middle, right smack dab in the middle, actually, of this interval. But any, as long as it's somewhere in there, either at the ends or somewhere in the middle, then this is improper. So we can split this up. We can split this up and say the limit as a approaches the offending number, and that is 0. The limit from negative 1 to 0 of 1 over x to the 2, oop, not of 0, but of a, of a. Okay, negative 1 to a of 1 over x to the 2 thirds plus the limit as a approaches 0 of a to 1. 1 over x to the 2 thirds dx. So that's just a property of definite inter integrals. You can always split it up. You can throw whatever number you want in between those two, as long as it's the same number, the top number here and the bottom number over here. OK, so we just split that up. Now let's evaluate this antiderivative of 1 over x to the 2 thirds. And when you do that, you get 
3 times x to the 1 third and I'm going to say limit of ooh, limit as a approaches 0 so 3 times x to the 1 third evaluated from negative 1 to a plus this is actually the exact same antiderivative but we have a limit again as a approaches 0 3 times x to the 1 third evaluated from a this time to positive 1 so we have these these same numbers represented by this letter a all right let's move on now the limit so we have the limit as a approaches 0 of 3a to the 1 third minus 3 times negative 1 to the 1 third I, I plugged in this negative 1 also because that's the fundamental theorem of calculus we have to subtract both of those and then plus I'm writing this line this part now plus the limit as a approaches 0 and by the way it won't always be 0 but it was just 0 gave us problems on this particular example so it's not always going to be 0 okay the limit of 3 times 1 this time we go from top to bottom so 3 times 1 to the 1 third minus 3 times a to the 1 third okay evaluating all of that here's what happens as a goes to 0 this whole thing goes to 0 and this whole thing goes to 0 so what you're left with is 0 minus or minus a negative so plus 3 plus 3 minus 0 this is this is my 3 and this is my 0 and this was my 0 and this was my minus a negative 3 okay so 3 plus 3 is 6 so we have an answer and we say something about that we say it converges so earlier I said I bet you're guessing that this is going to converge and you were right